For my today talk, I'm going to uh, present uh, the, actually this is the result from my info brief with uh, the title, Thinking about Red Plus Benefit Sharing Mechanisms, Lesson, room, lesson Learned from Kuti Forestry in Nepal and Indonesia. In today's uh, presentations, I'm going mainly to discuss the main highlights from the comparisons of uh, community forestry implementations for uh, red plus benefit sharing mechanisms and assess them in terms of the effectiveness, efficiency, and equity. And this can be adopted in a different context for uh, implementing the red plus benef benefit sharing mechanisms. Uh, experience uh, from Nepal greatly contributed by uh, Dr. Paudel, which uh, most of you probably already know. And uh, considering the last incidence of earthquake in Nepal, uh, I just want to mention before I start that uh, my praise and heart goes to the people in Nepal, and hopefully they would have you know a speedy recovery in the near futures. So, uh, community forestry's uh, experience uh, provide valuable lesson for red plus benefit sharing mechanisms for three reasons. First, because uh, the county forestry institutions have uh, established benefit sharing mechanisms, and this is usually recognized by the national law. And uh, secondly, because the county forestry, as you might already know, generates uh, benefits, not only for timber, but also from uh, other benefits such as uh, ecological uh, services and also uh, carbon sequestrations. And the third reason why uh, community forestry uh, can provide a valuable lesson learned for benefit sharing mechanism mm -hmm. in Red Plus is because uh, community forestry provides us uh, forest management options in implementing Red Plus on the ground. Before I go in to explain further on the lesson learned uh, from this comparison analysis, first I'm going to explain in terms of the community forest scheme included in the analysis. Uh, in Nepal, we are focusing on the current or existing community forestry schemes and also on the Red Plus piloting projects uh, that are implemented uh, for three years since 2011 to 2014. And the FECOFUN, which is the forest Co Federation of Community Forestry Users in Nepal, was the main project partners in this uh, pilot project. And this project was set up based on the existing uh, community forestry uh, schemes that has been widely implemented nationally since the uh, 1990s. And uh, the community forest user groups is the main uh, actors in this implementation of community forestry. Uh, in this Red Plus uh, pilot projects, uh, the project had objective of reducing emissions and also enhancing the local livelihoods. And the it made payments uh, against uh, two main criteria. First, the biophysical uh, criteria and also the social uh, indicator uh, that I'm going to explain more later uh, towards my presentations. On the other hand, in Indonesia, the two most relevant community forestry schemes uh, that uh, I thought we, with a clear arrangement for benefits sharing mechanism is the community forestry or in Indonesia we call it the Hutan Kemasyarakatan or HKM. And the second scheme is the Community Company Partnership Schemes. This uh, actually implemented uh, both of the scheme in most state forests in Indonesia, in which uh, deforested and degraded forest area occur. So the main objective of Community Forest Scheme is to increase the participation of local people, especially in forest management, and also in uh, restoring the state forest conditions, and also uh, to resolve the conflict over encroached forests. And for the partnership schemes, this is initiated by companies since the 1990, widely implemented in Java, uh, Sumatra, and also in Kalimantan. And company use this as a strategy in resolving long-term conflict inside their concession area. And uh, the company guaranteed the shared benefit from timber that are planted collaboratively uh, by the company and also by the community. So based on of these schemes, uh, we analyzed the comparative uh, between all the four schemes in Nepal and Indonesia. And at least there are four key lessons that I'm going to present today. 
But for more detailed discussion, you can read it in the C4 Info Brief number 112 that is available at C4 website. Okay, the first key lessons is uh, that we understood that from the initiation to the implementation stages, uh, there are three approach of benefit sharing mechanism have been implemented. First, the rights allocation base, the input base, uh, and also the performance base. Each of these approach has specific and complementary roles in ensuring effectiveness, efficiency, and equity of benefit sharing mechanisms. So the rights allocation based approach has been commonly used in the initial phase of any community forestry schemes. And under this approach, rights have been allocated so community have legal rights in managing and also uh, to get the benefit resulting from forest management or from uh, development interventions. Uh, and then uh, in under this uh, right base right allocation based uh, community forestry the red plus plant projects in nepal has been uh, implemented and they try to shift from the uh, right allocation base to more a performance base but in the beginning the input base uh, approach has been used basically to get the uh, project going and the payment criteria, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is different from the existing benefit sharing mechanism under community forestry. Uh, first, it's based on the social indicators. It's weighted uh, by 60% uh, to actually uh, share benefit to the poor women and other marginalized groups. And the other 40% weighted indicators are based on the biophysical factors. However, uh, to date, there has been no example of direct payments based on these uh, verified indicators of carbon enhancements. And the second lesson learned that I would like to highlight is that cost sharing is similarly important uh, to benefit sharing since transaction costs are potentially high in all schemes, in most of the commodity forestry schemes, both in Indonesia and also in Nepal. Uh, for example, because the challenge due to the economic of scales in community forestry forest management. And this is uh, applied both in Nepal and Indonesia. For example, in Nepal, uh, red plus pilot projects, uh, this project cannot afford of the, uh, the estimate MRV cost at the current scale of an average of 85 hectare per community forest user groups uh, management. The third lesson learned that uh, it's important to highlight is that for equity and long-term commitments, uh, property costs are important in, the, in deciding how benefits are shared, particularly if land use competition is high. As probably uh, some of you know, in Nepal, uh, property costs perceived to be low uh, compared to Indonesia that uh, have a high property costs of the community uh, managed lands and labor because of the alternative land use for smallholder uh, plant, rubber plantation and also from uh, oil palm plantations. So taking into account this uh, opportunity cost is important, especially in maintaining the long-term uh, community commitment and also to have more uh, interest, interesting uh, shared uh, benefits offered under the Red Plus benefit sharing mechanism. And as the fourth or the last lesson that is important to focus in ensuring the equity by allocating payments to public and social infrastructures uh, and also uh, providing eco economic opportunity to those who are landless. Uh, I think this is actually uh, from a Nepal case uh, can reveal that revenue are divided between funding developments and also uh, this is uh, especially for community infrastructures, facility, and social services. And also the other payment is a direct payment to individual households. So uh, in this way, uh, even though who are landless can benefit for having a better uh, social and uh, community infrastructure, including uh, health and education services. So from Indonesia, opportunity costs uh, because the high opportunity cost is important and also to provide the economic opportunity for those who are landless, uh, especially in the area where there's a community, partners, community and com company partner scheme being implemented. To conclude, I think in addition to the key lesson learned mentions above, I think it's important for scaling up 
uh, the legitimacy of process is required, especially in ensuring the efficiency, efficiency, effectiveness, and equity in the long term, especially under the Red Plus benefit sharing mechanism. For example, in Nepal, uh, the legal basis for community forestry uh, provides sufficient ground to uh, secure community share of Red Plus funds. I think, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ani. Does anyone have any questions for Ani on this very exciting topic? No. Okay, then let me ask a question. Is there someone? Claudio. I Thank think you. you have to stand so that you are on camera as well. Ah, great. <laughs> um, now I'm just curious. We hear a lot about community forestry being important for red, and conversely, also red being very important for community forestry. So it's, I mean, is this some kind? Is this always a win-win, or no, where, where are where are the trade-offs between these two things, sort of complementing or feeding off each other or helping each other? Okay. I think the most example that I can uh, tell is from a Nepal case because there where the Red Plus piloting project is built on the existing community forestry. Uh, there are mixed results, uh, especially uh, the, from you know, the experience that shared by Dr. Powdell that actually uh, payment from REDS provide or consider as a complementary a payments or bonus for community forestry, and it doesn't really directly uh, causing the change of behavior in their, you know, existing uh, long-term forest management practices. So, in a way, with or without payment from Red Plus, uh, they will continue what they have been doing, you know, for a long time. And yeah, and and actually, there are some preference among those who are involved. They, and especially also in Indonesia that people would prefer have more development projects rather than you know payments that are not really comparable to the opportunity cost of you know doing uh, their management practices so yeah so it has, it has still to be proven uh, by uh, having more probably involvement of community forestry uh, in this red plus uh, bear schemes i would say Please, Roman. You need to stand up. Yeah. Um, now, just because, <clears throat> as I see it, you have at least two broad categories of uh, benefit sharing mechanisms. Some are more or less regulatory, uh, as part of RED, for instance, and others are purely voluntary and based on the willingness of companies to deal with their communities and, and conversely. So, I was wondering whether we can <clears throat> assess major differences in terms of impacts, whether it's regulatory or purely voluntary. I mean, all of these <clears throat> um, uh, benefit sharing mechanisms or agreements that you mentioned with, uh, with companies in Indonesia are, are voluntary. So do we see a big difference in terms of impacts, whether they are you know, um, regulatory or not? OK. Well, uh, I don't see really any voluntary uh, benefit sharing mechanisms being uh, applied widely uh, for community forestry schemes. So, except probably under the Red Plus pilot project, in which by design it's you know uh, try to uh, develop more uh, participatory criteria for sharing the payments. Uh, probably I can say that the mandatory uh, benefit sharing mechanism is basically under the rights allocation base uh, under the community forestry uh, you know a benefit sharing mechanism in which that's regulated by the government for example in indonesia you know there is a division between uh, 70% for timber of uh, land to be allocated you know in their management practice and the other 30% for intercropping or for non timber forest products so that's that's basically the mandatory, you know, benefit sharing. That's where the community forestry groups can get their legal rights to manage and offer the benefits, you know, coming from those area. But uh, 
if if there is a enough uh, funding, especially to compete with the alternative, you know, uh, land use, uh, with that similarly at least to the poverty cost, the rights allocation base is more effective in the long term. Uh, I would say for for the sake of having uh, uh, you know a fair benefit sharing for the local community because the main interest or the main motivations for the community in the community forestry program or uh, HKM in, in the Indonesia is basically they want to get access to the state forest so they can do the intercroppings or to collect the non timber forest products so that's that is the yeah the uh, yeah, the, the lesson learned from uh, the experience. So along this line, let me ask one question. Um, as, you, as we know, Indonesia is really ramping up its social forestry programs. And I think the minister recently announced that there is new, new intention to allocate something like 20 million hectares of forest to local people, smallholders, communities, and so on. Where do you see within this flux of potential social forestry programs, where do you see kind of red or other types of environmental incentives fitting as a way to mediate or how would it work within this influx of social forestry programs? Okay, thank you Grace for the questions. Uh, I think uh, considering the, you know, the dynamics of the policy and also the land use changes in Indonesia. Uh, as we also discussed in our info brief, that in the beginning, <coughs> Red Plus uh, benefit sharing mechanism or Red Plus pilot project could work if in the area with a low opportunity cost. So probably, you know, in this uh, government uh, goals for having more social forestry as the main forest regime in Indonesia, it could be targeted for the nature reserve or conservation forest or national park. So that could be a start up point, I would say. Because uh, in because in you know in Indonesia there's sort of different forest classifications and you know uh, the production forest really have to compete with the alternative land use for expansion, you know, from coming from the expansion of oil palm plantation, also from rubber plantations that are really relevant for the community. So, so I think, I think for startup, if, you know, Red Plus, Plus Pilot project would be implemented, should be focusing in the area with low property costs. But there is a threat of that we have to consider so whether this will be effective in halting the deforestations and degradations. But I think most of, even most of the protected forest and national park and nature reserve of Indonesia has been subject for uh, encroachments, uh, you know, especially in uh, Sumatra and also in Kalimantan. Uh, thank you. I have uh, more practical questions related with these uh, ideas of uh, including this red plus into the community forestry. Uh, many of us trying to get more access for community, for land, yeah, for state forest. And uh, we heard from the governments, they allocated already 20 million uh, hectares. Uh, actually, long time ago, the government has allocated more about 5 million hectares. But still, in the reality, they are uh, not so much land already access yeah, because of many regions one of the one of uh, because of the bureaucracy the uh, difficulties in processing that land but also from the allocated land still very few of the land really cultivated or used by the community so i think i think the reality is uh, managing forests or uh, growing timber is not not attractive for smallholders for for the people so the, my question is whether this red plus uh, benefit can be added into uh, increasing incentive for people to be more involved in this forest business. Is it allowed, for example, for community timber plantation, not for HKM? Because there are so many uh, community forestry schemes in Indonesia. Uh, I, I can see that this, this look like similar with the certifications experience, yeah? timber certification. There are, we can uh, we always say that there are a lot of opportunities, but 
Then in the reality that the cost, the transaction cost is much, much higher than the possible benefit uh, if smallholders, they want to invest by themselves in the certification process. So in reality, again, we can see that all the process has to be initiated by external parties who may be taken the benefits from this process. So again, how, how can we use this kind of incentive, this kind of opportunities to really provide incentive to community to invest more in uh, managing forests or growing timber? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the questions. I think Adele, you have touched uh, very uh, complicated uh, issues here uh, because uh, if we are, we are referring to the Indonesian situations, uh, there are many programs, including the program that mentioned by uh, Grace earlier, that was mainly top-down, and uh, it's not based on the actual uh, maps that really reflecting the situations on the ground. So that's, that's another challenge. For example, in community-based uh, plantation programs, or HTR, HTR, the Hutan Tanaman Rakyat, it's very difficult to find a clean and clear uh, area that actually can be uh, allocated rights for developing the community-based plantation programs. And even though in uh, the map that used by the Ministry of Forestry, it's eligible. It's a production forest. It's, you know, it's uh, allowed to be developed as a timber plantations. But if you go to the site, it's actually been converted to other you know, land use like oil palms and and probably some uh, district government uh, giving the mining uh, concessions to some uh, private companies. So I think there is now, under the new uh, ministers, uh, they are committing to develop a one map uh, policy now. They, they are now uh, commit to develop one map as the basis for integrated planning between uh, departments involved in natural resource management. So we are looking forward to have that to be uh, implemented soon, uh, because I think there's been a lot of efforts in doing that. So I think that's, that's an issue. And the second issue is that the procedures to get this uh, right is very complicated, uh, both for uh, not, not, not only for HTR, the Hutan Tanaman Rakyat, the community-based plantation programs, not only for HKM, the community forestry programs, but for all of the community-based uh, forestry managements, in applying the rights, the rights, community has to go through these complicated procedures. They have to attach the actual boundaries of the proposed area, they have to develop the proposal, they have to do the socioeconomics baseline survey, so unless they are uh, get assistance or facilitated by NGOs, the local NGO, national NGOs, and uh, in in our project site, including uh, you know, uh, assist, uh, facilitated by C4, uh, there is no opportunity that community can do this by themselves. So that's why this is uh, caused another constraints in developing the community-based forest management because the high transaction costs, and the the community usually don't have the capacities to put all this, you know, together by themselves. And I think uh, for where we can see this red plus uh, can be implemented by involving community forestry, I think the important thing is to find uh, the, the right incentive from the carbon markets. I mean, you know, if we want to talk about the incentive, it obviously have to relate it with the market. So do we know where is the carbon markets that potentially can, you know, uh, provide incentive or buy this uh, from Indonesia, for example, for Indonesia forests? So and and part of this is to also identify the right carbon pricing. I would say, because you know, uh, even though to involve the private company, they would like to know what is the carbon pricing that will be have to. Uh, applied in in their you know carbon trading, and and probably uh, this is not the silver bullet, but I think having more uh, encouragement for public private uh, people partnerships that that would be another solution. So engaging more with the private sector who are interested in buying the carbons, and it doesn't have to be 
a forestry based company it could be you know uh, those uh, companies or private sector who are relied on natural resource for their micro material that, that would be an option okay um, we are coming to time now so if there's a last question burning question from the audience no Okay, in this case, thank you very much, Ani, for uh, the talk.